Um, so, who would like to um, uh, open the proceedings with a question? Yes. And uh, if you'd like just to say um, who you are or where you come from or something exciting like that, um, then uh, uh, that would be helpful. It's terribly exciting, but anyway, um, Sue Thomas, parent of a child with autism and um, expert advisor on the Treehouse, um, on ambitious about autism. Um, my question is that um, the current reform of the SEM system or proposed reform presupposes that um, the system doesn't work at all at the moment in the UK and I think most people acknowledge that there is a postcode lottery and there are some places in the UK who deliver provision better than others and I would um, really concur with um, one of the speakers on looking at why some people actually deliver provision better than others and what is it about the system that they use that enables that to happen and also of the European countries obviously the way they deliver provision is very important and I would just like to ask the panel their thoughts on that. But kind of, um, the government seems almost on the bordering of obsession with reforming at the moment, you know, as if nothing actually works. And I know that there are parents in the audience that have had a really rough time, but there will be other parents where they've had a reasonable time with provision in their local authority. Thank you, Sue. That's a really good question to kick us off. I'm going to ask Lorraine on that. I'm not going to bring, I'm not going to bring every panellist for every question, um, but I hope by the end of questions to involve all the panellists, um, and I might even, if, if they're really lucky, give them a sentence at the end as well. Um, so I'm going to ask Al uh, Lorraine, and then actually I'm going to ask Alison for her view on that. Um, okay, right. Um, I fully agree with you. There is a postcode lottery. Um, and we do need to celebrate where it does work. Um, what we hope is that the government have just put out some tenders for pathfinders who will be looking at some of the um, elements of the green paper and looking for local authorities, PCTs and voluntary sector to working together to actually you know, push forward where good practice has existed and show it as, if you like, a pathfinder um, so that other local authorities might pick it up and move with it um, and to try and reduce that postcode lottery um, and that will be key really to to any of the sort of proposals that are currently um, on the table from the green paper um Alison, what's your take on that um, so there's two aspects to your question one is about the postcode lottery and is there inequity in what um, young people with SEN receive and might receive in future and the other is let's celebrate what works um, I'm going to start with the latter. Let's celebrate what works, but can we do something better? And what I'm going to, the, the celebration of what works is that there is a the statutory assessment process, although experienced as stressful by some, for others is experienced as very helpful in bringing together a range of professional views and their own view and coming up with something that um, helps them both to understand their own child and feel that other people understand their own child. And what could work better, and I hope will work better, uh, if the SCN Green Paper recommendations are taken forward in an effective way, is giving parents more control. If you look at what's happened in adult social care, that model has, been, has driven the development of adult social care over the last 10 years. And what that has enabled to happen is that um, adults who are in receipt of social care are actually much more empowered to make decisions for themselves. And I'm, hoping that the element of the SEM Green Paper that gives parents more control will actually empower parents to have a more, um, a greater responsibility but also a greater say in their, their child's um, provision and I'm hoping that that will actually help them feel that they can help more and that their young person gets what they want. So that's to celebrate and to move forward. The bit about postcode lottery, that worries local authorities enormously and the fragmentation that um, you know, we're already seeing in terms of local authorities. If you're a London local authority, you can see the pattern of what's happening around you. And I work for Camden, there are six other local authorities around us who have variably made savings by cutting different aspects of SCN service provision. And I can tell you now there is a phenomenal postcode lottery and it's been exaggerated over the last year in my view so that worries us and I don't have an answer for that but I hope we can do something in the future um, to address that because it's it's not helpful. 
Thank you very much indeed, Alison. Now, I'm just going to have a quick look at um, what we've got by way of written questions, but I'll, before I shuffle the pack, so to speak, I'll take another one from the floor. Who's got one? Sally. Um, Sally Burko, um, and my son is seven, and he has autism, high functioning. Um, my question really is about the removal of School Action and School Action Plus, because a lot of kids who are autistic don't have statements, um, and some aren't even diagnosed, and particularly those who are high functioning are on School Action and School Action Plus. And how, with their removal, will we know that kids will get the support that they need in school? Virginia, would you like to uh, say something on this subject? I'm really worried about it. Um, I think one of the um, overt, explicit aims of, of policy, and indeed um, what think tanks and the Audit Commission said um, several years ago, it's as if it's some sort of willful cussedness that there are so many children in the system who are coming forward and getting identified, um, and that you know uh, we need to reduce the numbers, um, as if a sort of policy um, action can can turn away the, the tide. Like can you, um, I think the danger of not identifying need is, is just going to get worse, um, and I fear it will lead to more exclusion. And um, especially if, if we have the workforce reforms and if um, teachers are more um, enabled to identify, maybe you don't need those official stages, maybe it'll just be inherent in the professional toolkit and their repertoire of skills. But I think that's a long way off. That would take time. And just to do away with, with phases of action. I mean, it was interesting hearing about Finland um, and, and its approach, and also Spain, that you, you can't just wish away um, levels of intervention and levels of assessment. Thanks, Eugenia. Great. Uh, well, I think there is over-identification, and uh, what we're looking for is a more seamless approach, which uh, means that you don't have to go through these peculiar and particular bureaucratic obstacles in order to get the support your child needs. But uh, we're going to have to see how that works in practice before we can know whether uh, which one of us is right on that. Um, but uh, I hope, I think the critique is right of the current situation and I hope that we can move to a situation in which uh, better trained, having SEMCOs who actually are trained teachers for instance, um, and uh, other raising uh, of, of training should mean that the child's needs can be met and recognised without having to go through um, that formal process um, and ensure that uh, I hope it will lead to improvement, but uh, you know, there's more work to be done somewhere. Thank you, Brad. Um, now I've got a fantastic question for Kieran here um, from the floor. Um, what do you think makes a good teacher, Kieran? Um, well, I think I already answered that question. <laughs> um, Say it again. Okay. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case you lot didn't hear it, um, <laughs> a bit more clearly this time. What makes a good teacher is a teacher that is um, caring. Yeah, you got that? Caring. And um, a teacher that, it, that has knowledge. Knowledge, yeah. Got a bit upstairs, yeah. A teacher that doesn't say some of the students are a bit dim. A teacher that actually likes kids. A teacher that is dedicated to their job. A teacher that has knowledge. And a teacher that, um, and a teacher that W wouldn't get cross with a student just for making a little tiny joke. <laughs> well, that's an idiot. Thank you. Well, you see, Thank you, everyone. That's an even better answer than last time. <laughs> okay. Absolutely.